body on the shot. Go Georgia Southern! Up for kill once again. Raymond Johnson, a huge sack in the final minute 40. D'Angelo with the goal for Georgia Southern. Eagle Nation, welcome to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look inside Georgia Southern Athletics. Alongside Colin Lacey, I'm Danny Reed. Packed episode this week on the field of Allen Paulson Stadium. We're going to take a look at Coach's Corner with baseball headman Rodney Hennon, Georgia Southern's unique relationship with the military. But we begin this week with a double dose of Georgia Southern football. In this opening segment brought to you by Optum Medical Center, we first take a look back at the Eagles at number 24 Coastal Carolina this past Saturday in Conway. And Colin, we had discussed the fact that Coastal was 4-0. They were number 24 in the country off to their best start since making the jump to the FBS. But the Eagles have had a history in knocking off ranked teams each of the last two seasons. One of the things we touched on last week as well was how much of a difference their quarterback Grayson McCall had made to this Shauna Clear team. Found out about 90 minutes before that because of injury he would not be playing on Saturday against Georgia Southern, but the rest of the experience that we talked about in last week's episode for this Shauna Clear team really came to fruition this past Saturday against the Eagles. His backup, Fred Payton, ended up throwing three touchdowns in the game, but he got things started in the first quarter, a 72-yard hookup with speedster Sam Denmark for a 7-0 lead. Leave it to the Eagles special teams to get back into it. Late in the first quarter, Wesley Kennedy bobbles a punt but ends up returning at 60 yards for a score to tie the game at 7. And it was a big play by Georgia Southern. You felt out of the gate that Coastal Carolina may have a little bit of the momentum with the way that Fred Payton had been playing and getting the touchdown reception. But Georgia Southern answers it back with a big run by Wesley Kennedy. Now Coastal retakes the lead at 14-7 in the second quarter, only to see the Eagles get a touchdown with their two-minute drill right before halftime. J.D. King a five-yard touchdown run, and at the break it was 14-14. And it actually remained that way until midway through the fourth quarter when the game started to turn for the shot to clears. Another touchdown pass to C.J. Marrow made it 21 14. Eagle offheads had trouble doing anything else over the final eight minutes, and Coastal finished it off with a 20 yard touchdown run by Reese White, picking up a 28 14 win over Georgia Southern to drop the Eagles to 3 and 2 and 1 and 2 in conference play. And Eagle Nation, you saw this one just on Thursday on ESPN right here at Paulson Stadium, battling the South Alabama Jaguars. You know, South Alabama had never defeated Georgia Southern 0-6 all-time. They also had lost their previous 11 games on the road in league play. They jumped out early, though. A 54-yard field goal from Diego Wajardo was a career high. Jacks took a 3-0 lead into the second quarter. Georgia Southern, though, tied the game on an Alex Rayner 29-yard field goal. And J.D. King gave Georgia Southern its first lead of the contest, 13-yard rushing touchdown. 10-3 was the score, but in the waning moments of the first half, Brandon Crum came up with his first receiver receiving touchdown for the Jaguars from four yards out on a second down and goal play. At the half, it was 10-10, to and we made this comment during the broadcast. There have been so many ties this year. That was the fourth time that Georgia Southern has had a halftime tie in 2020. And I think you made the point that it was just because it was 2020 because it's the same in the front half and the back half, so it all works. <laughs> South Alabama jumped back in front 17-10. Jalen Tolbert, a 12-yard receiving touchdown. Georgia Southern went into the fourth quarter down seven. They were 2-21 and in their previous 23 games when trailing after three, but the Wesley Kennedy show was about the fourth quarter. 14-yard touchdown run to tie the game. 15-yard touchdown run for the go-ahead. And then Georgia Southern's Derek Canteen with a pass break up on fourth and seven from the 21-yard line with under 90 seconds left. And the Eagles hung on, rallying in the fourth quarter to defeat South Alabama for the seventh straight time, 24-17. to When we come back from this timeout, we'll take a look at Georgia Southern's military connections as Blue White Weekly continues. It's back, the return of the prestigious Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, honoring college sports excellence across all competitive divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow along with L Directors' Cup on Twitter or online to see which schools will be taking home a first-place trophy in June for their season-long success. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, a premier institutional award jointly launched in 1993 by USA Today and NACTA. You never know what's around the corner. That's why Ford is built for what's next. Rough terrain, we can help tackle it. 
a lot going on around you, we can help you focus. Driver in your blind spot, we can help you spot them. And to help you prepare for what's next, your local Ford dealers are offering great deals on America's best-selling brand. Now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 trade assist cash on a 2020 Escape, Edge, or Explorer. At Georgia Power, our customers are at the center of everything we do. We're investing in technology to increase the resiliency of our power grid, expanding our infrastructure to shorten outage and repair time, and providing a cleaner, more diverse fuel mix with solar and nuclear energy. We're working hard to keep energy at a cost 15% below the national average while maintaining the highest levels of customer service and satisfaction. With reliable energy, the future is in your hands. Hi, I'm Paul Newman with States for Real Estate, the broker and owner, also co-owner of PMG Rentals, which is a property management company. As a Georgia Southern graduate in 2005, I got into real estate fresh out of school and uh, was excited to have the opportunity to be the official real estate agent of Georgia Southern Athletics. I would say what sets me apart is the drone and online marketing presence that uh, Statesboro Real Estate has to offer. Statesboro is such a small uh, town and just has a really cool feel to it and it's neat to see somebody at the grocery store or at the ball fields and know that you've helped them in the past and have the opportunity to continue to help them pursue their dream home. PMG Rentals is a great value adder to Statesboro Real Estate for the fact that if you're a renter we can show you houses to buy in the future and also if you're an investor you can purchase with us and then lean to PMG as your property management for the future. Whether you're looking to buy an investment property, have it professionally managed with PMG Rentals, buying your first home, or buying your dream home, make sure you call Paul. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look into Georgia Southern Athletics. Presented by Ford. Go further. Georgia Power, a Southern company. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look inside Georgia Southern Athletics. Now, Georgia Southern football hosted South Alabama this past Thursday at Alan E. Paulson Stadium on Military Appreciation Night, a yearly reminder that the freedoms we enjoy are due in large part to the sacrifices made by the men and women of our armed forces. And in this week's feature story presented by Ford, the connection between Georgia Southern, the Georgia National Guard, and the ROTC program makes it all the more meaningful. Um, you, you know, uh, unfortunately with the pandemic, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of being able to have those type of interactions with ROTC. Uh, but I know in years past, uh, we've always tried to uh, have some type of relationship, some type of, uh, uh, you know, activity maybe set up where, where they may come watch us in morning workouts or uh, maybe even, you know, talk with us and, and, and have that type of stuff. One of the things uh, we always want to do is integrate our cadets into their university. They get to get the undergraduate experience one time in life, <laughs> and then they go to work for the rest of their life. So on Saturdays, we, uh, we, d we start off the game with the color guard. Uh, we lead the football team on the field with our Ranger Challenge team. And uh, General Simmons in the National Guard, who has also given us our own National Guard detachment as part of Eagle Battalion, they have the cannon at the game, and the cannon now fires after all touchdowns and all field goals, and it just helps the entire atmosphere. Yeah, that, that right there really caught on. You know, in 2018 when that thing started, uh, um, at first I think it scared everybody in the stadium when it went off, but um, now everybody seems to expect it, and, and I think that's really become fun. fun. Um, and that's really become a really a part of our game day atmosphere. It, it starts with teamwork. There are so many sim similarities between athletics and what the military do. The military is a team of teams, from the small team of four people to the large team of 20,000 soldiers. And it's a team of teams. Well, if we look at football specifically or any other sport, um, it's teamwork. You know, we have to do this together to be successful. And so I think a lot of that translates well from athletics to Army ROTC and reverse from Army ROTC to athletics. I think it's really important that we understand what the military uh, means uh, to everyone in this country. And, uh, you know, so we can't ever take that lightly. And we got to understand that we, we do have to pay tribute to that. And I shouldn't say have to, we get to, we get to pay tribute to that. And, um, you know, all the veterans and all the ones that are active and all the ones that do serve 
um, you know, um, it's just invaluable for us and, and, and that's something that we need to be grateful for every day. After this, we'll talk Georgia Southern women's soccer and volleyball as Blue White Weekly continues. What's important now more than ever is making sure you are connected. Bullock Solutions is Statesboro's partner in high-speed internet, phone, and smart home technology with residential and commercial solutions. We continue to move forward and are here to get you connected. Optum Health System's commitment to you has not changed. Unmatched safety and compassionate care. Others may talk about the new normal, but at Optum Health System, we've always provided high quality, personalized care safely. If you have recently delayed your care, we want to reassure you we are prepared to care for you. Our absolute commitment to safe, high quality, personalized care is stronger than ever. We welcome you back to Optum Health System. The great thing about joining the Sun Belt for Georgia Southern was, you know, that opportunity for our guys to go experience bowl games. Uh, they're able to fight for a conference championship each and every year and, um, and then have the opportunity to go finish the season off with a bowl victory. Our team recreated each moment uh, in a way that honors the story and, and, and retells the story for many generations to come. From the beginning, we've always just wanted to build something that honored Georgia Southern and uh, they'll stand the test of time. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. At Georgia Power, our customers are at the center of everything we do. We're investing in technology to increase the resiliency of our power grid, expanding our infrastructure to shorten outage and repair time, and providing a cleaner, more diverse fuel mix with solar and nuclear energy. We're working hard to keep energy at a cost 15% below the national average, while maintaining the highest levels of customer service and satisfaction. With reliable energy, the future is in your hands. What's important now more than ever is making sure you are connected. Bullock Solutions is Statesboro's partner in high-speed internet, phone, and smart home technology with residential and commercial solutions. We continue to move forward and are here to get you connected. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look into Georgia Southern Athletics. Presented by Ford Go Further. Georgia Power, a Southern company. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look inside Georgia Southern Athletics. For our Olympic sports segment, we take to the pitch. And for men's soccer, they were on the road at Coastal Carolina. But Colin, women's soccer closed out the home portion of its schedule last week. Yeah, Georgia Southern men's soccer up in Conway on Sunday afternoon, falling 2-1 to one in overtime as the Shauna Clear score with less than a minute to go in the first overtime in that match. But as you mentioned, Georgia Southern women's soccer at home for two this past weekend as we take a look back at those highlights. Georgia Southern women's soccer with two games this weekend over at Eagle Field in Erk Park. It started against South Alabama on Friday night as South Alabama entered the matchup at 6-3 overall, 6-2 in Sunbelt Conference play. They got the scoring started first in the 22nd minute of the ball game as Gracie Wilson would find the back of the net. The goal would be assisted by Kaylee Littleford and Deanna Green, and it put South Alabama up 1-0 early in the game. That would be all the scoring for either side. As the teams piled up the shots in the second half, South Alabama with six shots, Georgia Southern with five. But it's a 1-0 victory for South Alabama over Georgia Southern on Friday night, which would lead into senior day for Georgia Southern women's soccer on Sunday afternoon against the Trojans of Troy. Georgia Southern scoring early in the fifth minute of the ball game as Marcella Montoya would find the back of the net for her fifth goal of the season. 
It would be assisted by Kristen Sandifer and Megan Prisby and put Georgia Southern up 1-0 after four and a half minutes. Troy would score the equalizer in the 20th minute of the game as Maya Tessier would find pay dirt assisted by Aaron Bloomfield and it's 1-1 through 20 minutes at Eagle Field. Late in the first half, Marcella Montoya would do it again, scoring her sixth goal of the season and second of the day. As she puts the shot on goal, Troy would get the last deflection in, but Marcella Montoya gets the credit and gives Georgia Southern the lead at 2-1. On into the 52nd minute of the ball game, Deborah Ruiz tries to pressure the keeper for Troy. As the keeper tries to clear it away, it's deflected by Ruiz right into the back of the net for a goal. It's her second of the season and puts Georgia Southern up 3-1 after 50 52 minutes of play. Georgia Southern ends up peppering the net nine shots, seven on goal. And it's a three to one victory for Georgia Southern on senior day over at Eagle Field in Nurk Park. Once again, a great game for Georgia Southern women's soccer against the Trojans of Troy on Sunday on Senior Day. They look ahead to the Sunbelt Conference Championship that starts on Monday over in Foley, Alabama. Georgia Southern Volleyball back in action inside Hanner Fieldhouse for the first time in what seems like forever as they got the home opener this past weekend. They finished up a two-game series with Georgia State this afternoon. We come back from this break, we'll speak with Georgia Southern's longest tenured head coach in Coach's Corner with baseball skipper Rodney Hennon when Blue White Weekly continues. Are you suffering from hip or knee pain? Don't let the pain hold you back. The region's most experienced robotic joint replacement team at Optum Health System offers an individually tailored approach that is more precise and creates smaller incisions. For you, that can mean a faster recovery with less pain. Your comeback starts here. Call today to find out if robotic-assisted joint replacement is right for you. The great thing about joining the Sun Belt for Georgia Southern was, you know, that opportunity for our guys to go experience bowl games. Uh, they're able to fight for a conference championship each and every year and, um, and then have the opportunity to go finish the season off with a bowl victory. Our team recreated each moment uh, in a way that honors the story and, and, and retells the story for many generations to come. From the beginning, we've always just wanted to build something that honored Georgia Southern and uh, they'll stand the test of time. You never know what's around the corner. That's why Ford is built for what's next. Rough terrain, we can help tackle it. A lot going on around you, we can help you focus. Driver in your blind spot, we can help you spot them. And to help you prepare for what's next, your local Ford dealers are offering great deals on America's best-selling brand. Now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 trade assist cash on a 2020 Escape, Edge, or Explorer. At Georgia Power, our customers are at the center of everything we do. We're investing in technology to increase the resiliency of our power grid. Expanding our infrastructure to shorten outage and repair time. And providing a cleaner, more diverse fuel mix with solar and nuclear energy. We're working hard to keep energy at a cost 15% below the national average while maintaining the highest levels of customer service and satisfaction. With reliable energy, the future is in your hands. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look into Georgia Southern Athletics. Presented by Ford. Go further. Georgia Power, a Southern company. Welcome back into this week's edition of Blue White Weekly, your weekly look inside Georgia Southern Athletics. So we dive into Coach's Corner this week here at J.I. Clement Stadium to sit down with head coach Rodney Hennon. Coach, before we dive into what's happened the last eight months or so, 2021 is going to be your 22nd year at the helm of Georgia Southern. Where have you seen this program grow from when you got here before the 2000 season? Well, you know, if you, if you look at the history of the program and, and the special thing about um, Georgia Southern baseball is the, the, there's been tradition here for, for a long time. Uh, a, a great foundation was here and, and in place uh, when, when I became a part of the program. Uh, and we've worked hard to, to continue to, to build upon that and, and, and grow the program. And uh, a lot of people take a lot of pride in, in this program, and we're very fortunate. Take us back to March 12th. You guys are playing arguably your best baseball of the season. Just swept number two Georgia here at home for the season series sweep. Then everything gets shut down because of COVID-19. What was the message to your guys how to tackle the uncertainty? 
You know, just we, we talk about attitude all the time, just trying to be positive and, and, and taking a, a negative situation and in the, in the end growing and, uh, from it. And, and I think this team has done that. I think they handled it, um, you know, as well as you could. And I think now they appreciate that much more the fact that we're able to be back out here on the field. Again, a couple of weeks later, the NCAA comes out and says that the seniors are allowed to return as far as eligibility is concerned. Having that core nucleus back, what does that do for this team? Well, it means everything. It's uh, you know, a great group of leaders uh, that you know, the guys look to uh, within this program. And uh, you know, it would be unanimous if you asked, do you want these guys back? We all wanted them back. So I'm, I'm certainly glad they made the choice. And, and there's a lot of things that, that they bring to the table. Started up fall ball a couple of weeks ago, and I know these guys are ecstatic to be back out on the field. You know, certainly we, you know, have taken precautions, uh, you know, th we have things in place, procedures, protocols in place, but when you're actually out there on the field between the lines, uh, it, it's, it's baseball. I, I think we all appreciate that that much more after having it taken away and, and, and being without it for as long as we were. I know still very early in fall ball, but what's the biggest expectations that you and the staff have going forward into 2021? We feel like this is a team that, that can compete for a championship and, and, and get back into regional play. Uh, you know, it's, it's the big things don't happen without taking care of the little things on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think our guys understand that. And uh, we're having a very productive fall right now and about halfway through. So, so looking forward to, to finishing it off on a strong note. Coach, appreciate the time. Great to see the guys back out on the field. Appreciate it, Colin. That wraps up another edition of Coach's Corner here on Blue White Weekly with Georgia Southern head baseball coach Rodney Hennon. More Blue White Weekly right after this. This is it. This is the day we work for. All the months of preparation, all the hard work. Blue collar, discipline, toughness. That is what has led to this moment. There are people out there that tell you you can't do it. But what do we say to that? GATA! -A! They will tell you you're not fast enough. They'll tell you you're not strong enough. But what do we say to that? GATA! -A! They will tell you you can't have it. You don't deserve it. But what do we say to that? GATA! -A! Get after those assets. So you'd like to open a checking account today? You never know what's around the corner. That's why Ford is built for what's next. Rough terrain, we can help tackle it. A lot going on around you, we can help you focus. Driver in your blind spot, we can help you spot them. And to help you prepare for what's next, your local Ford dealers are offering great deals on America's best-selling brand. Now, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 trade assist cash on a 2020 Escape, Edge, or Explorer. At Georgia Power, our customers are at the center of everything we do. We're investing in technology to increase the resiliency of our power grid, expanding our infrastructure to shorten outage and repair time, and providing a cleaner, more diverse fuel mix with solar and nuclear energy. We're working hard to keep energy at a cost 15% below the national average while maintaining the highest levels of customer service and satisfaction. With reliable energy, the future is in your hands. Greetings from Vive Country, your new crazy fast neighbor, now in 16 states. We're thrilled to be your home and business internet, phone, and TV provider. From cutting edge technology to excuse free customer service, we're committed to our local communities. We've been working nonstop upgrading and enhancing our fiber based network that delivers speeds up to 5 gig internet. We believe in faster speeds, community involvement, and 100% customer satisfaction. Join Vive Country today at vivebroadband.com. Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look into Georgia Southern Athletics. Presented by Ford Go Further. Georgia Power, a Southern company.
Welcome back to Blue White Weekly, your weekly look inside Georgia Southern Athletics. Earlier on, we teased a special guest for our final segment. Just so happens we have a chance to speak with Director of Athletics Jared Benko just over seven months into his first year leading the Eagle Athletic Program. Jared, we appreciate the time today. Yeah, sure, Danny. Glad happy to be here. It was the early portion of March when you made your introductory press conference in the Bishop Fieldhouse, but you didn't get a chance to take over until April 1st. At that point, you did not have an official athletic event as the AD until the Campbell football game to begin this season. So how much were you chomping at the bit to be able to see that come to fruition? Yeah, I was chomping at the bit for sure. It was too long of a, of a, of a break. So, you know, really it was a chance. I, I try to turn, you know, lemons into lemonade and, and really it was a chance for us to get to know the staff better, try to get to know our coaches better. Uh, student athletes kind of transitioned, started coming back here in June, and so I had a chance to meet with some of them. But yeah, it was just an opportunity to try to make the most of what was provided to us. And so by the time the Campbell game came around, we were all chomping at the bit. Typically, an athletic director isn't hired in the middle of a calendar, but you actually got six months of a jump to get ready for your first fall schedule. And even with all of the COVID-19 concerns and the wishy-washiness of what would or would not be a potential football season, just how valuable was that extra time? It was really critical, Danny, because if you think about any time you open up the fall with football, it's obviously going to be a, a huge event and it's something everybody looks forward to. But when you had COVID on top of that, there's a lot of extra planning that really took place over the summer. So that time was critical. And also it allowed us to make sure we had a good game plan, not only for our student athletes and coaches and staff, but also too for fans and spectators in Paulson. As an athletic director, I would imagine you have to see the whole picture, be able to forecast what things could look like. But with this time in mind, how much more did you have to be a day-by-day -day kind of AD? Well, I think you have to, you know, sometimes you can look out uh, across the horizon and you can say 100,000 foot vantage point, and then sometimes you take it day by day, as you mentioned. And part of that's having a really good staff, and we've got a great staff here, and they allow me to really sometimes stay up high and look at the big picture, um, but also be able to get down the weeds when we need to. And so I think that's just, you know, when it comes to like football schedule, it's a great example, Danny, where we had to take it day by day a few times this year and not look too far ahead. And now, you know, our schedules for the most part is obviously done and without knowing the, the implications of COVID. And so now we're looking at 2025 and beyond. So it just changes by the day and you got to roll the punches. You know, it's funny you bring up that metaphor because you've literally been out here pulling weeds over the last few months. Yes, they, uh, I'm not very uh, good at many things, but manual labor is something I excel at. Being able to listen to the fans and then implement certain changes, you think back a couple of weeks, and the addition of the yellow school bus, the hydration station, right near where the Georgia National Guard cannon was located, what was it like to implement something like that? Yeah, listen, Larry Mays and our staff had a great idea, and we talked about it over the summer, and it took a little bit of time to get the bus cleared through the state, but you know, part of it is just, as I talked about in the press conference when I was first named athletic director here at Georgia Southern, was, was combining innovation and embracing history, and you can do both, and so I think that's huge. Comprehensive excellence were the two words that you uttered quite a bit during that introductory press conference as well. With the challenges of the time that we're in, where would you say that Georgia Southern is at in that process? Yeah, I, I would say in, in, in some ways we're hitting the mark, some ways we're not. And so I think it's every day is an evaluation. And as I share with our staff and our student athletes, you know, there's three things we can control every day. It's our attitude, our effort, and how we treat people. And so every day you either won or you lost it. And so, I, I, you know, to me it's a continuous review of all of our programs, and that includes myself. I'm, I'm my toughest critic, and every day we try to make sure that we're better in this university and better in the athletic department. So um, I probably would never, Danny, be happy of where we're at. We're always trying to find ways to get better. Jared, we appreciate the time today. Thanks very much. El Southern, GATA. For Colin Lacey and everyone at the Multimedia Development Center, this is Danny Reed. You've been watching Blue White Weekly.